Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome to episode 15 of Network Chat Programming. So today we're going to talk more about the server and specifically getting started with some actual server code. So last time we took a look, of course, at these command line arguments and that really gave us a way to actually set the port number here uh, dynamically in a way, right? Because we're actually getting input from the user um, without a GUI. But more or less, we're starting a um, we're starting a server based on the user specifications at this point, which is the port number. So now that we've done this, right, we've made a little thing here. Um, we can actually get rid of, I'm not sure why, we don't, I don't think we need this, uh, this um, global variable as of such. Yeah, probably gonna say no. Yeah, okay, we'll get rid of this. Uh, so this dot port equals port, we don't need that and we don't need this private import either, okay? We're just, we're just passing it from the constructor and we're actually going to be passing it into our server, which happens here. Okay, so how do we actually start the server? Well, glad you asked because it's actually really simple. Um, we've got this constructor here. What we're going to do is we're going to actually run new server. Okay. Now I lied just then. I deleted something I probably shouldn't have, and I just realized why. Uh, we decided to divide the server. The, uh, we we, did, we actually de decided to divide the uh, the actual logic behind the server and uh, the actual server stuff. So in other words, the back end, I guess you'd call it, the actual sending, receiving, and dealing with packets. Um, to be in its own class and then the interface to be in another one now We should probably use the port here and the reason we should use it is because um, You know the user might want to request for example what port number we're currently in, and we sort of want to give the uh, the user the user some level of uh, of Interactivity with the service so in other words we might get uh, we might let the user um, for example run a command like you know uh, hyphen port or something and then hit enter and it'll actually print the port number that the server is running on just in case uh, the user forgot. Of course, I could just scroll through their history and see how they started it, but if it's been several days, maybe a problem. So we'll just put that in there as a cool little thing. Um, and because of that, we'll also make an actual object here called server server, right? And we'll set server equal to new server. So we're not just starting a server, we're actually assigning it to a variable so that we can then call methods and get information from it. Um, awesome. So what we've got now is a server object. So if we go back into server.java, uh, we've got a blank server. So let's start. Okay. So the first thing we're pretty much going to do here is make, um, I guess, the the server side, <clears throat> the server side of the client version. So if we go back to client here, just for reference, we've of course created a, a datagram socket with uh, with a with the port, and we did all this cool stuff. Um, but over here in uh, in server, okay, we're going to do like literally pretty much the same thing. Okay, so we'll make. Um, uh, we'll, we'll make another private datagram socket socket and we'll make socket equal to new datagram socket with the port number. Okay, now this is literally the same as the client and you might be like, well, what the hell's the difference? And well, there really is not, you know, a difference. Whoops. There's really not that much of a difference. When you're handling UDP stuff, there's no difference. There is, of course, when you're doing TCP. And the reason there is when you're doing TCP, I'm not going to get into this again, uh, but just lightly. Um, the reason there is a difference when you're doing TCP is because there's stuff like authentication and uh, and delivery, like assuration, I guess, going on. Where, um, <clears throat> and that's probably not a word, assuration. Assurance of, de of delivery, I guess. Um, but, you know, with TCP, you've got stuff like protocols that actually make sure packets do get there and get resent if they don't. And that's why there is something that the server does extra. But with UDP, remember, you're just sending a packet to another host. Yeah. Now, the reason we've called this the server is because this will be like the, uh, the, 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 I guess, I guess the center point. If you picture like a hub and spoke kind of topology, which is where you've got a center and then everything else is, co is connected, like uh, the spokes on a bicycle wheel, for example, you've got the, the middle, the axle, and then you've got uh, all the spokes going out. Um, this is kind of our spoke, uh, sorry, this is kind of our axle, right? The server, this is kind of like the center point. All the clients connect to this one server. And of course, as of such, the server is not just, you know, required to receive all these packets of data and just do something with them. It's required to actually manage all the clients and know from which packet it comes from. And it's, it's quite a complicated process, but luckily, um, luckily you have me to explain it to you. <laughs> okay. So to do this, right, to, to manage all this stuff, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on with server, especially with threading. Okay. So we'll make a thread right now here called a, uh, 
probably just a run thread, yeah? And this will just run the server. So kind of like we did in game programming, we'll, impl we'll implement runnable here, which, uh, which just gives the server its own thread so it's not running on the default Java thread. Um, it gives us a bit more control here. And we, of course, get this awesome run method as a result, um, which will run when we actually start. So what we'll do here is we'll set run equal to new thread. We'll call it the, uh, well, first of all, this, right? Because it, we're referring to this class since, since it is implementing runnable. And that will cause this run method to run. But um, we'll call it, we'll just call it server, right? Because just this is just the server thread, okay? Not, not, not a receiving, not sending, just the plain server thread. And over here in run, this is where all the stuff is gonna happen. So first of all, we should probably check if a server is running or not. So again, I'll make a boolean here called running, set it equal to false. Uh, and when we do run, we'll set running equal to true, okay? And we'll have a while loop in here like we do all the time. And this is the other thing, right? This server should really have a bit of a while loop going on. And the reason is it is constantly, constantly listening for packets. Now clients are as well, but this is doing something a bit extra. It's actually having to manage separate packets and assign them to the right client. So it does get it does get quite um, challenging at times, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Okay, so um, I like to, uh, let me um, just think of a nice method name here. So uh, I like to make a method uh, that's separate from the run method, which essentially just uh, manages, I guess, the clients, or more or less kind of receives the data from the clients. I'm just thinking here. Uh, no, okay. So we'll make a manage clients, okay? And we'll also make a receive method those two methods, okay? Now, so the managed client will be a, a void, managed clients, okay? And that'll be responsible, and that'll have its own thread, by the way. That'll be responsible for, um, that'll be responsible for managing the client. So, not receiving, not, you know, per se, receiving data, um, but, yeah, so it's not going to receive data, but what it will do, okay, that's what the receive uh, is for, what managed clients will be doing is um, essentially sending out stuff, sending out things like uh, pings every now and then. So maybe like, um, well, let's just say once every five seconds or something, once every two seconds, whatever. It'll send out like a, you know, like a, like a ping, and then it'll see if the client actually replies. And if the client doesn't, then we can assume that. You know, we'll send a few more pings just in case it's a lost packet or something. But after a while, we can assume that the user is pretty much timed out or the user has, uh, you know, improperly closed their application. Because when, when a client closes their little chat window, we want to actually set a, send a disconnect packet to the server just to make sure that we actually remove that client from the, from the, uh, from the, the list of clients, basically. But sometimes people will just end process or just, uh, I don't know, unplug their computer from the PowerPoint and... Um, kill it that way, right? If it's on a laptop with a battery, whatever. Um, just hold the power button and shut it off that way. And if you do that, obviously, you know, the computer has no chance to send that packet. The application has no chance to send that goodbye packet. And that's why we, of course, need to send checks. So the managed clients will basically manage the clients. I don't probably don't need to comment that. Okay, it'll manage the clients. It'll make sure that they're still there. It'll make sure that it, that it disconnects them if they're not still there and stuff like that. Now receive, okay? Receive will do something totally different. Receive will actually receive any kind of data that it gets. And it's actually very, very vital how we handle this receive um, process, okay? Now, the reason it's vital is because, you know, we're not just receiving a packet from one client. We could be receiving packets every millisecond, pretty much, okay? We're receiving a ton of packets. We might have 50 clients here. We might have stuff like disconnecting, reconnecting, connecting, sending messages to each other, sending messages to a specific client. We will have all mayhem going on here. So the receive has to be very, very uh, vigilant, okay? So what I'll do is over here in, in a private thread run, I'll actually make two more threads, okay? I'll, I'll make one called, uh, I don't think, do we need one for, we do need one for manage clients. Okay, I'll make a manage one, I'll make a send one, and I'll make a receive one. So right now we've got four threads. So manage clients, when we first start manage clients, we will uh, hit manage equals um, new uh, thread there, not this, 
new thread, okay, and we'll call it uh, manage, okay, um, and that will of course be an anonymous. Oh, sorry, not anonymous type. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Yes, it will be. Okay, so we'll make a um, make a new thread here that is indeed uh, an anonymous type here. We'll make uh, public void run. I'll talk a bit about this anonymous stuff in a minute here, but public void run. And then at the end, we'll uh, start this. Manage to start. Okay, cool. So now that we've got this, make sure you close that with a semicolon. Now that we've got this, this uh, this anonymous stuff basically just means that instead of us having to make a class and implement runnable separately, we can just do it in here. Okay, we've implemented this run method uh, inside this method instead of having to make a new class specifically for that. Just basically um, cools down the code here instead of having to type heaps and heaps of lines of code. We've um, made it a lot easier for ourselves and a lot cleaner in my opinion at least okay so we, we this is good okay this is the uh the the manage thread and in the manage thread yeah in the manage thread what we'll have is a while loop now while true probably isn't the best practice so what i will have is a while running loop this ensures that if running for some reason is set equal to false we'll actually make all these threads stop okay because this will eventually equal false, and that means we get to the end of this while loop, which of course gets out of this run method entirely, okay? And this is where all of our managing happens, okay? So, more or less, oops, managing. Awesome. So, now that we've got that, we should focus on the receive method. So the receive method will be, let me just, uh, might just make a bunch of spaces here so you guys will see this in the center of your screens rather than at the bottom. So uh, we'll make the receive, whoops, we'll make the receive uh, thread equal to a new thread, we'll call this one receive, and whoops, and we'll make it again an, an, an anonymous uh, um, implementation here. So, and we'll start receive, okay? And of course we'll have a while running loop as well. So these are virtually identical, okay? But of course the code inside them will be different. Now why am I splitting this into two different methods, you could argue. And the reason I'm splitting it into two different methods apart from obviously the point of having two different threads for it is because, um, you know, essentially managed clients is doing one job, receiver is doing another job. It's a very smart idea to, to separate your code like that because um, if we have an error that spawns in the receive part, then we can see there's nothing to do with managing clients, it's just to do with receiving the data receiving the actual data, okay? And vice versa, so good idea, okay? So this run, remember, this is no kind of loop. This run runs once, so what happens is it says running it true, it starts this thread essentially by calling this method and starts this this thread by calling this method, method and then that's it, it's gone, okay? That is the only purpose pretty much of this run uh, thread, which is why I called it that, okay? It's, it's pretty much over. It's life is just to, to run the server, to start it. Um, okay, cool. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, that's going to wrap up this episode, but in the next, I got rid of run, of course, somehow. Um, but of course in the next episode, we will talk about, uh, either ma managing, receiving or sending. Now sending, I'm not going to cover sending just yet. Okay. We'll talk about, uh, managing and receive. We'll talk about receiving next time because receiving has to happen before managing because managing relies on receiving right? We receive data and then we, we manage it. Um, this is like a maintenance uh, method. Okay, so we'll talk about receiving next time, yeah? Um, so if you guys did enjoy this episode of Network Chat Programming, please hit the like button, 200 likes, one video per day, 300 likes, two videos per day, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.